Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we will understand about assignment problem and I will briefly introduce you to the basics of assignment problem. So let's begin. We want to understand what is an assignment problem and to make you understand that I have taken a very simple example of a real life scenario. In fact, these kind of problems are very frequently occurring in different companies and industries. So for example, there is a company and in the company there is a particular department and the head of the department has six persons available to fill out the six jobs and he would like to know which job should be assigned to which person so that the tasks can be accomplished in minimum time or he can also think that he has to distribute the jobs in a way that he has to pay minimum. So the objective of doing job assignment can be different in different problems but one question which is always common in all the problems is which job should be assigned to which person. So we are always looking for finding an answer to this question and that is why these kind of problems are called assignment problems. And there is an assumption uh, which is common to all the, these kind of problems. It is that each person can do each kind of job. But his efficiency and capacity towards different jobs is different. So next important point we need to understand how this assignment is going to be. This is going to be a one to one assignment. Means one person will be assigned exactly one job. Though every person can do every kind of job, but you cannot give more than one job to one person. And similarly, you cannot divide the jobs into halves among more than one person. So that's the meaning of one to one assignment is that one person, one job. That's it. And now comes the definition of balanced assignment problem. So if the number of jobs is equal to number of persons, that is the matrix is square you will soon see the metric structure then assignment problem is said to be balanced otherwise unbalanced because just now I have talked that each person will be doing exactly one job so the matrix should be the square matrix so this is the matrix representation of an assignment problem this is similar to what we used to see in a transportation problem also so here the rows are respectively denoting the resources the resources can be persons or they can be machines also and the columns are denoting the jobs. This is the default structure, it never changes. So here I have taken an example of four, so four resources and four jobs. And what additional information will be given to us? That the time taken to complete the job, time taken by ith person to finish the jth job is denoted by tij. For example, t11 denotes the time taken by first person to complete first job and similarly all other are the times. So these times can be in certain question costs also but here in general in an assignment problem they are always the time. So you can understand the sense of optimization from this data that what we ultimately want to do. We ultimately want to do the job assignment in a way so that our total time is minimized. The total time taken to complete the jobs should be minimized. So similar to transportation problem, assignment problem is also a by default minimization problem. And what are the constraints on the system? The constraints are same which I have just explained to you that you have to make a one to one assignment. In the solution technique we will learn how to do this but for the timing we just need to be familiar with the term one to one assignment. So I have just defined the objective and the constraints. So now I want to give you the linear programming formulation of assignment problem. And for that we need to define the decision variables. So we are looking for the answer which person should be uh, assigned which job. So there should be a job allocation variable defined. So suppose xij define the job allocation variable in igf cell. That means if ith person is being the jth job then the variable of that cell is xij. So clearly is xij can have only two values either 1 or 0 because 
in the job allocation what is happening either the person is getting the job or not getting there is nothing in between so one for getting the job and zero for not getting the job so before giving you the lpp formulation i am comparing the assignment problem with the transportation problem because that is necessary at this step because we have already seen the lpp formulation of transportation problem so here we need to first see how these two kind of problems are related so if you look at the metric structure of an assignment problem this looks almost similar to the transportation problem where the rows were sources and the columns were destinations except the fact that in an assignment problem we are not given the supplies and demands so now you just change the perspective of looking at this problem you look at this from the point of view of a transportation problem and then we'll try to identify the supplies and demands so since one person can do exactly one job so that means the supply of re each resource or each person is exactly one unit and similarly since each job needs to be done by exactly one person so the demand of each job is exactly one resource so the demand unit is also default one so this is the reason that default supply and demand in assignment problems are one but they are never written here because it's understood so they are never coming with the supply and demand information so now it looks pretty like a transportation problem so now if you recall what was the lpp formulation of a balanced transportation problem then you will see this one where we were to minimize the cost of transportation and the constraints were equality constraints ais and bjs were denoting respectively the supplies and the demands there so this way we get our lpp formulation of balanced assignment problem in which cij has been replaced with tij because instead of cost there we have time here and ais and bjs both are equal to 1 and 1 because all supplies and all demands are one and xijs can have just two values either 0 or 1 which i have just explained to you and here m is equal to n the number of persons and number of jobs are same so now let's talk about what can be the number of feasible solutions of an balanced assignment problem so suppose the number of jobs and number of persons is same which is n and then let's try to make the combinations so first person can be assigned any one job out of n jobs because it is the first person who is getting the first priority he can be given any one job out of the total available n number of jobs so what are the left options for the second person since one of the job has already been assigned to the first person so the number of choices for second person will be n minus 1 and similarly the number of choices for the third person will be n minus 2 and you continue the process in this way you will figure out that the last person or the nth person will be left with just one choice he will be assigned just one last left job so if you take a pause and compute the how many ways these kind of arrangements can be done what is the total number of feasible solutions with this arrangement you will figure out that the total number of possible assignments is n factorial and if n is very large you can easily imagine the size of the number n factorial so it is computationally very expensive to compute all the feasible solutions and then selecting the best one because our aim is remember not to just do the assignment our aim is to do the best possible assignment so we want to find the optimal solution so this is not a good way to find the optimal solution so therefore there should be better techniques for the same so in our next lecture we will actually learn what are the techniques to find the optimal assignment or the optimal solution of an assignment problem